Kirby never shies away from experimentation. The Pink Puff stars in a pinball game, puzzle game, and even an accelerometer game for the Game Boy Color. One of the most successful offshoots is Canvas Curse for the Nintendo DS, which smartly uses the touchscreen by guiding Kirby through hazardous courses with drawn rainbow lines. After nearly 10 years, Nintendo returns to the concept with Kirby and the Rainbow Curse. While it's not an entirely successful follow-up, it's nonetheless a delightful and lighthearted journey that's easy to enjoy. For the first time in the series, Rainbow Curse utilizes a claymation style that works so well, it's a wonder it hasn't been used before. The general aesthetic of Kirby is even more lovable when it's all turned to clay. The handcrafted feel lends the game childish warmth, making it hard to get upset even when you die. Plus, Rainbow Curse never turns the look into a gimmick. There are small touches here and there, such as Kirby flattening out when he falls from a great height, or enemies forming out of clay in the background, but it's never overdone. These things only add to the charm, instead of getting in the way. Unfortunately, it's difficult to fully appreciate the style since the touch controls have you staring at the low-res gamepad. There's so much going on the vast majority of the time that it's hard to even glance up at the television. The few times you can, it's obvious how much better the game looks when realized in high definition. The diverse levels are easy to admire, however. Right until the very end, Rainbow Curse throws in plenty of surprises. Expect to work your way up a giant tree, bounce around on the clouds, and even deal with two Kirbys at once. While each stage is strong, the best moments come from the various transformations. At specific points, Kirby will turn into a tank, submarine, or rocket ship. Each transformation has unique controls that completely change the feel of the game, such as using drawn lines to control the trajectory of the rocket, or tapping to launch cannonballs while Tank Kirby moves independently. One of the best aspects of Rainbow Curse is that anything seems possible, and the game repeatedly reinforces that belief. Considering how wildly creative the stages are, it's disappointing that the boss fights feel stretched thin. The initial clashes against the first three bosses are well-crafted, forcing you to think carefully and move quickly. The problem is, instead of providing new battles, Rainbow Curse repurposes these three bosses in the second half of the game. While there are twists, conquering a slightly more difficult version of something you defeated earlier isn't that fulfilling. As a result, the later worlds, except for the final one, each end on a sour note. The other issue Rainbow Curse consistently suffers from is that the controls aren't always as precise as they could be. Drawing platforms for Kirby to roll along is simple and intuitive enough, but attacking enemies can get a bit hairy. To attack, you have to tap Kirby, causing him to dash forward encircled in blue sparks. Because you constantly have to draw platforms underneath Kirby in tight corridors, it's easy to accidentally tap him instead, leading to death or unnecessary damage. Thankfully, Rainbow Curse is awfully generous when it comes to dishing out extra lives, making this a minor annoyance rather than a significant roadblock. There's also an option to skip levels if you're truly stuck, but we never needed it. An initial playthrough of Rainbow Curse should last around 8 hours, but there are plenty of secrets and other features that keep you around. Each stage has an assortment of figurines hidden throughout, and you usually have to solve a puzzle or perform an acrobatic feat to obtain them. Some of the figurines are relatively easy to snag, while others are deviously placed. It's a fine balance between rewarding you the first time through and leaving enough room to encourage repeated attempts. The drive to dive back in would be lessened if the figures weren't so lovingly detailed. Like any good toy, they're simply fun to look at and each has a humorous description attached. Whoever was responsible for localizing the descriptions rightfully enjoyed themselves. In addition to the figurines, every level has a secret diary that can be earned at the end of the stage. The diaries contain crayon-drawn animated stories that fill in the narrative and somehow manage to make the game even more adorable than it already is. Challenge mode and multiplayer round things out with varying levels of success. Completing stages unlocks new challenges that consist of four rooms where players must snag a treasure chest as quickly as possible. These challenges condense Rainbow Curse to its core, leading to short bursts of enjoyment, but we ended up growing tired of them pretty quickly, missing the wider, more open levels of story mode. Even so, it's appreciated that there's something to chip away at after completing the game and gathering all the collectibles.
Multiplayer, on the other hand, feels rather tacked on. Three other players can jump in as different colored Waddle Dees, each carrying a wooden spear. The additional players are especially useful during boss fights, where they can just run up and hit things instead of worrying about creating lines. Yet because so much of the game is built around the draw mechanic, there are entire levels where the Waddle Dees can't do much of anything since they don't create lines themselves, leading to instances where your friends might just end up bored. It may not be Kirby's most triumphant outing, but Rainbow Curse is still an entertaining ride. The abundance of ideas and charming look trump the few but severe shortcomings. Once again, Kirby does something a little different, and we're certainly glad he did.